In just a moment, we will bring you the old Fall River line, starring Brian Donlevy on the Cavalcade of America. But first, here is Gain Whitman for DuPont. When the leaves come down in the fall, the rugs come up. Fall house cleaning. And there's no better way to brighten your home than with DuPont Speed Easy, the easy-to-use wall paint. It goes on easily with roller or brush and dries to a velvety finish in an hour. Speed Easy is an oil emulsion paint thinned with water. It costs less than $3 to paint an average-sized room. And it comes in white and 11 harmonious colors. When you are thinking of house cleaning, brighten tired-looking drab walls with Speed Easy. Ask your DuPont dealer for this product of better things for better living through chemistry. The Pony Express. The Covered Wagon. America, the Steamboat. America means skyscrapers and haylofts, the crack of a pioneer's flintlock, and the sound of the riveter's machine. The glow of a fireside and the glare of a blast furnace against the midnight sky. America is your story. America is you and everyone you know. Tonight, the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents Brian Donlevy in The Old Fall River Line on the Cavalcade of America. On the Old Fall River Line, on the Old Fall River Line, I fell for Susie's line of talk and Susie fell for mine. Then we fell in with a parson. And he tied us, tied us For 90 years, the Fall River Line sent its steamers down Narragansett Bay, around Point Judith, through the waters of Long Island Sound. Presidents and farmers, businessmen and adventurers, brides and grooms, they all took the Fall River Line to Boston or New York or Newport or Fall River. Our story opens as one of the steamers, the Priscilla, nears New York. In the captain's cabin, a gray-haired man gathers his belongings. It is his last trip on the steamer he has commanded for ten years. He is about to leave when... Come in. Captain Hamilton, we're almost to New York, sir. Oh, come in, Mr. Carter. Thank you, sir. I, uh, I mean Captain Carter. <laughs> You'll have to get used to hearing yourself called Captain Ed. Yeah, I guess I will. Can I send you any of your things... No sense in your taking it all off tonight. Oh, all right, Ed. Some things in my desk I want to take along tonight, Joe. What's that? Oh, just an old tin box. But there's 45 years of steamboating in it. Oh? I don't understand. Look at this. I guess you'd call it junk. Nothing in here worth anything to anybody but me, except maybe this. A quarter? Hmm. <laughs> That's the first one you ever earned? Well, something like that, Ed. It was when I was a kid, working on the line. <laughs> no gold braid then, and no gray hair. <laughs> I was cleaning the after deck, cleaning it at night because it was the only time I could get at it. Handling a brush and a bucket wasn't my idea of romance on the steamer. <laughs> What's the matter? It's yes, sir, Hamilton. I... Yes, sir. Well, get a move on down there. That gonna take you all night? No, sir. I'd like to bust this right over you, big fat kid. Who's that? Oh, just a passenger. Oh. You get tired of doing that sometimes? Tired? <laughs> just let me set foot on land and I'll never want to see one of these tubs again. <laughs> You hate it that much, eh? I sure do. Yeah. Go at that job pretty well. Can't hate it very much. Look, mister. To me, it's a job to get done. And the quicker it's over, the better I'll feel. 
Oh, well, maybe you don't feel like talking. Oh, I don't mind. Go ahead. The passenger is always right. <laughs> You're pretty bitter. Why don't you like your job? Because it's not what it's cracked up to be. Steamboats. Romance. Yeah. Work your way to the top, they said. The only place I'll work to is the hull of this tub. And that's by wearing through with this brush. <laughs> That's a wonderful sound, Mr. Hamilton. Oh, just a lot of steam blowing through a whistle. No, you're wrong. It's America. America? What's your first name? Dan. Well, look, Dan. To you, that whistle's just steam. But to me, it's America. Just like the Fall River Line's America. Huh? I don't get it. You will. You will when you see and hear beyond the steam and the whistle. You'll get it when you remember the years that have passed... And look to the years ahead. You see, Dan, not too long ago, the water we're going over now was once part of a wilderness. A wilderness that looked impenetrable. A barrier to Americans. But it didn't stay that way long, Dan. We broke into it with our eyes fixed ahead. Building a new country where we could look ahead. Where we could build. You see? Huh? I don't know. What's that got to do with me? I'm a deckhand. So was I. On riverboats in Ohio. Oh, but I'm nothing but but a flunky. What chance have I got? I was once a carpenter. I worked hard at it. Oh, well, maybe you were, but what's all this got to do with me? Just a moment. Here. Hmm? Here's a quarter. Hmm. Thanks. Oh, it's not to spend, Dan. That's not why I give it to you. Well, then what's the idea? Just look at it for a long while, Dan. Study it. And you'll see why I've talked the way I have. And maybe what you'll see there will give you the answer to all your questions. It'll tell you why scrubbing a deck now oh, is all... Oh, there you are, sir. I've been looking for you. Your cabin's ready. Uh, thank you. Good night, Dan. I enjoyed our talk. I, uh... Hey, you. Wait a minute. Yes, what is it? Who was that? <laughs> are you joking, youngster? No, I'm not joking. I couldn't see him. Who was it? That... That was the President of the United States. That was a long time ago, Ed. Yeah, but the uh, quarter... Well, I looked at it a long time. I wanted to ask him what he meant, but I couldn't get up the nerve. <laughs> but I finally found out, Ed. What? On the day they made me a steward, a step up, I took another good look at the quarter and something hit me right between the eyes. I knew what made it possible for me to be a steward and not stay a deckhand. One word stamped on this quarter. Liberty. Oh, I see. But, Dan, the rest of this stuff, it, it wasn't all given to you by presidents. Oh, no, Ed. Lots of other people traveled on the Fall River Line. It was... It was like a cross-section of America. Uh, what's this? Oh, this song sheet? Yeah. <laughs> You've heard this song, Ed. The old Fall River line. Harry Von Tilzer wrote it. <laughs> well, what's it doing in this box? Well, there are two people mentioned in it. Dan and Susan. Dan? You? That's right. <laughs> Me and Susan. It was right after I'd been made captain of the Bristol... Yes, I got to be captain. Took 15 years, but I was still young. <laughs> I guess the gold braid and the brand new uniform puffed me up a little. Well, anyway, I was standing on the after deck. We were a little late in pulling out over an hour, I guess, when all of a sudden I heard... Oh, Stuart. Stuart. Are you deaf or just rude? Are you talking to me, miss? Well, there's no one else around, is there? No stewards, anyway. Oh, you... <laughs> is something funny, miss? Oh, I called you steward. I heard you. <laughs> you, uh, you look like a steward. I happen to be captain of the Bristol. Oh, yes, yes, I see now. It's in gold braid on your hat. It's really the only way I could tell. I'm sorry, miss. You'll have to go forward. No passengers allowed back here until we're out. Why not? It's the rule. Who made it? It's the rule of the line. Well, it's a silly one. Why aren't passengers allowed back here? Because they might get hurt. Are you really the captain? I thought all captains had whiskers. On the return trip, I'll wear a false beard. 
You're not very nice. Look, miss, I'm very busy. We're over an hour late getting out now. Oh, and... th- that's what I want to ask you about. Will we be late getting into Fall River? Possibly, yes. But my aunt's giving me a birthday party. Congratulations. You aren't very nice, are you? Miss, may I ask you again to go forward? How long have you been a captain? I've... Four days. Oh, and such a big boat. My, I'll bet you're proud. As captain, I order you to go forward. Passengers aren't allowed back here before we start. I know, it's a rule of the line. Then please obey it. (laughs) I believe you're angry with me. I'm not. As a captain, I don't lose my temper with passengers. Is that a rule of the line, too? And a good thing. (laughs) All right. I hope we meet again, Captain. More than I can say. <laughs> You're having trouble with her, Captain. What? Oh, uh, no trouble at all, sir. <laughs> well, I, uh, I'm Mr. Warren, the new president of the line. Oh, glad to know you, sir. I'm Captain... Yes, yes, I know. Pretty, wasn't she? Who? Oh, who's a girl? I didn't notice. Oh, nice blue eyes, gold hair, and a spoiled brat. (laughs) I think, I think she got your goat. She did not. Well, I mean, she didn't. Well, perhaps not. But somebody ought to give her a spanking. I told her three times no passengers were allowed back here before we sailed. Oh, oh. well, I'd better go then. Oh, no, 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 sir. That's all right. You're not getting in the way. You sure? Yes. uh, People like that girl that annoy me. They refuse to believe that they're not allowed to do anything they want to. You can tell them in a second. Spoiled, selfish, think they own the world. If that girl was my daughter, I... <laughs> you, take... you would be an awfully young father. I... <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, somebody ought to teach her a lesson. Why don't you? I'd like to. And then let me know how you did it, eh? What? I've been trying for 20 years. <clears throat> She's my daughter. <laughs> Captain Hamilton. Hmm? Oh, uh, good evening, Miss Warren. Are uh, passengers allowed here? Of course. Excuse me, I... Oh, please, don't go. I'm awfully sorry, Captain Hamilton. It's quite all right. Oh, but it isn't. I was nasty earlier this evening... But uh, I'll tell you a secret. Secret? What? I did it on purpose. Hmm. What for? Well, when I came aboard, I saw you standing there, and you looked... mm, Well, you looked like somebody who ought to have a little of the conceit taken out of him. I'm not conceited. Now, if you'll excuse me... Don't don't run away, please. (laughs) You did look like a dressed-up rooster. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's well, better. You look much more human when you laugh. <laughs> but uh, what made you say I'm conceited? Just the way you looked. So proud. I am proud, Miss Warren. You may call me Susan. All right. You said you were proud. What else were you going to say? Well, it wasn't pride in myself, but in what I'm doing. How? Well, I... I don't know exactly how to say it, but there's something that makes me feel proud when I come aboard my ship. Not because I'm the captain, not because the Bristol is a great ship, but because the Bristol... The the whole Fall River line is like America. That's nice. Go on. Well, (laughs) you see, Susan, 15 years ago, a man told me something. Where I heard just a whistle, he heard the voice of America growing strong building. I'm part of that now. I'm helping. No, I like you very much. Uh, Thanks. Uh, Do you, uh, do you make the trip back on the Bristol, too? I make all of them. Why? You know, I think I'm going to take quite a few trips on the Fall River line myself. Wanted to see me, Captain Hamilton? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Frailing. I, uh, have you the passenger reservation list? Oh, yes, sir. Right here. Hmm. Everything filled for the next trip? Mm, not quite, sir. Oh. Is, uh, 
sir, anything wrong, sir? No, no, no. <clears throat> I, uh, I've been captain now for seven weeks. <laughs> That's right, sir. Mm. In that time, we've had quite a few couples in the bridal suite. Almost every trip, Captain. Yeah. I, uh, is, is it reserved for the next trip? Why, no, sir, it's not. Well, then make a reservation for it. Name, sir? Uh, Captain and, and Mrs. Dan Hamilton. You are listening to Brian Donlevy as Captain Dan Hamilton in the Old Fall River Line on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As the second part of our story opens, Dan Hamilton, retiring after 45 years' service with the historic Fall River Line, is telling his successor how he rose from deckhand to captain and found not only opportunity, but romance. Yes, Susan and I were married. Harry Von Tilzer and his partners wrote that song about us. <laughs> uh, what's that you got there? That, uh... That's just the cabin boy's hat. Belonged to a kid named Tony. Oh? Oh, what's the story, Dad? Well, Ed, I guess it was Tony who... Well, it was one night, the Bristol it was, on the run from New York to Fall River, and we were well out in the sound, and I was on the bridge with the watch. Half point starboard, Mr. Appleton. Half point starboard, quartermaster. Half point starboard, sir. Steady. Steady, sir. Nice night, Mr. Appleton. Yes, sir. Captain Hamilton, sir. I am. It's your cabin boy, sir. Tony's collapsed. What? Tony? Looks like appendicitis. We've got to get him to a hospital, sir. Well, do you think he can hold out until morning when we dock? He's pretty sick, Captain. No doctor aboard. Has anything been done for him? Well, we're taking him below, try to make him comfortable. Pain seems to be letting up a little. Mr. Appleton. Aye, sir. What speed are you making? Eight knots, sir. Increase to ten, Mr. Appleton. Aye, aye, Captain. Captain Hamilton. Aye. Just pick this one up over the wireless, sir. SOS, the steamer Boston, Eastern Steamship Company, is on fire. 600 passengers aboard. Position? Dead astern, sir. Distance about 50 miles. Mr. Appleton. Aye, Captain. Bring her about. But, Captain, what about Tony? If we delay our arrival in Fall River, it'll mean his life. Mr. Appleton, there are 600 people aboard the Boston. I know the routes and the latest estimated positions of ships along them. We happen to be the closest to her. But Tony's one of us, sir. Can't some other ship we go? We can sacrifice 600 lives, Mr. Appleton. Or we can risk one. But you're talking about one of your own crew, sir. Have you ever seen a ship on fire at sea? No, sir. You will, Mr. Appleton. Bear a hand now. Bring her about. Aye, aye, sir. Quartermaster. Quartermaster, aye. Bring her about. Put your wheel over. Aye, aye, sir. Steady as she goes now. Steady as she goes, Captain. Mr. Appleton, full speed ahead. Oh. Tony, how are you feeling now? Oh, I'm all right, sir. You just go ahead to the Boston. Don't worry about me. Oh, you know? Yeah. I, I heard the men talking. Well, rest, uh, 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 rest easy, lad. Uh, rest easy now. Uh, will, will we will we make the Boston in time, sir? I think we will. Good. Good. Tony, I... Uh, I... Yes, Captain? Well, I just want you to know I'd have done anything to save you, and then that... SOS came. 600 lives out there, lad, or, or yours. Yeah. I was in a spot. I had to decide something. It, it was right what you did, sir. Thanks, Tony. It ain't me, sir. I, I got to thinking. I'm one person. That There's 600 on the Boston. A life is a life, Tony. Yeah, sure, I, I know that, sir, but I got to thinking about my folks. They came over here from Europe. Pop... Pop used to tell me how it, it made everything different. 
I got to go to school. Something I never would have been able to do if I hadn't been here. I, I got a job. A job doing what I wanted to do, not something I would have had to take. And all of a sudden, lying here, I knew why. Why, Tony? Because it, it's all the people that count. Not just one or even a few. It's all of them, sir, all of them. Everybody having the same chance. So I figure, what's one against 600? You did right, sir. You made it to the Boston in time, didn't you? Yes, we did. And Tony? He, uh, he didn't make it. Oh. Well, there are lots of other things in this box. Come in. The Captain Hamilton were pulling into New York. All right. Thank you. Uh, will you come into the salon, sir? Salon? Something wrong? Oh, no, sir, but, uh, well, will you come, sir? Come on, Dan. Now, wait, if this uh, is... Oh, please, Dan, come on. All right. Why, Ed, what's all this? You didn't think you were going to leave cold, did you? Uh, quiet, please. Quiet. Quiet, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, you all know Captain Dan Hamilton, so there's no need for me to introduce him. Tonight, tonight he made his last run on the Fall River line. And in a few minutes, he'll go down the gangplank for the last time as captain. But, uh, well... Well, Dan, here, we want you to accept this watch from us and, and, and from the line. I guess there are a lot of words a man could say at a time like this, but I, I can't think of any of them right now. Just, just thanks. <laughs> Goodbye, Ed. Take good care of the Priscilla. I'll, uh, walk down with it. No, no, please don't. You stay here. I, I think I'd rather walk off alone, Ed. All right, Dan. We'll be seeing you. Sure. Sure you will. Are passengers allowed back here, Captain Hamilton? Susan. Come on, I... Dan. I'll walk off with you. All right. I didn't want to go in the salon, Dan. I, I would have cried. I know. Susan, I should have said something in there, something about the line, but I couldn't. Now I can to you because you know what the Fall River line meant to me, to, to everybody who sailed on it. It wasn't just a line or boat, Susan. It, it was America. It grew. People made it grow the way they made our country grow. I'm leaving it. But I'm leaving it to men who'll go on from where I left off. That's what makes America great, Susan. Because there's always somebody to carry on, to remember our traditions, and to keep them alive. Our star, Brian Donlevy, will return. But first, here is Gain Whitman speaking for DuPont. Have you had trouble this past summer with bread turning moldy in the bread box? Good heavens, no. You radio announcers ask the most embarrassing questions. Moldy bread, not in my house. I'm glad of that. But you used to find moldy slices now and then, down at the end of a loaf of bread, didn't you? Well, a few years back, yes. The reason you've been having less trouble with your bread turning moldy these past few years is because chemists have developed mold inhibitors called propionates. Bread is one of the oldest foods we have and one of the very best. The Bible calls it the staff of life. 
Its very name has come to mean food. We speak of a man earning his bread when we mean earning his living. But all too often in the past, the golden loaf that reached you fresh and tasty from the bakery soon grew spots of mold. It happened usually on warm, humid days. It happened quite often in families where there were still four or five slices of bread left over for a few days. When that happened, what remained of the loaf had to be thrown out, wasted. And bread is nothing to waste. Not these days, when the world needs food. So a chemist in the baking industry went to work on the problem of keeping mold from attacking bread for just those extra couple of days that would let you use the whole loaf. He found that some foods contained a mysterious something. Nobody knew just what it was, which retarded mold. And at last he discovered the mysterious something. Propionates. The DuPont Company manufactures calcium and sodium propionates and supplies them to your baker today under the trademark Mycoban. As a result, the bread you buy stays good longer, saving food and saving money. Because the Mycoban has no taste, you don't realize it's there. But it's chemistry at work, serving your welfare. Mycoban is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. Now, here is our star, Brian Donlevy. Thank you. Thank you, John. I've been on Cavalcade several times now, and it's always been a great kick to play the men who helped build our country, pioneers who gave us everything we have today. There's a story coming up for next week's cavalcade about another pioneer. I <laughs> wish I could play the part, but it'd be a little tough because it's about a 12-year-old boy, and I gave up those parts a few years ago. But John Heaston will tell you about next week's cavalcade. John. <laughs> Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade brings you Skippy Homeyer in One Wagon Westward. It's the inspiring story of John Sager, 12-year-old American pioneer. Alone and unaided through sickness and hardships across the unknown wilderness in a covered wagon, young John brought his brothers and sisters to Oregon and safety. Be sure to listen next Monday to One Wagon Westward, starring Skippy Homeyer. Daylight saving time ends in certain areas on September 28th. This may change the time at which the program is heard in your community. Please check your local paper for the time at which this program will be heard next week and each week thereafter. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbrister. Our Cavalcade play was based on research made available through the courtesy of the New York, New Haven, and Hartford Railroad, operators of the old Fall River Line for almost half a century. Brian Donlevy may currently be seen in the Walter Wanger picture, Canyon Passage, a universal international production. In the cast with Brian Donlevy tonight were Mary Jane Croft, Carl Frank, Clayton Post, William Johnstone, Jerry Hausner, Sidney Miller, Herb Rawlinson, Ken Peters, and Theodore Von Elts. This is John Heaston inviting you to listen next week to Skippy Holmeyer in One Wagon Westward. Cavalcade of America, to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.